I'm Jay Jackson. Welcome to WineNewsNoir.com. Thank you for watching and subscribing. We begin this episode with a warning. July 4th is one of the deadliest driving holidays of the year, mainly because of drunk drivers. To curb the problem, increased policing is necessary. But because African Americans are stopped at a disproportionately higher rate than others, the risk of a drunk driving arrest is also higher. Short of abstaining, there are some things you can do, though, to save your life and your livelihood. <laughs> Every year, more than 40,000 Americans are killed in car crashes. 30% of those are alcohol-related, and one of the deadliest holidays, July 4th, Independence Day. People think they feel fine. Oh, I can get home. It's no big deal. Dr. Lindsay Williams has seen her share of trauma working at the prestigious Cedar sinai Medical Center and the Veterans Administration Hospital in Los Angeles. She says there are key points to remember before you sip this holiday. The number one thing that I would recommend is to stay hydrated and to stay fed uh, during the holiday season. So um, that could look like setting reminders for yourself so that you're reminded to, to drink water or to have a meal or a snack. You can incorporate water into a cocktail or a spritzer, whatever it is you're drinking, so you already have that hydration built in. Of course, there's non-alcoholic cocktails and mocktails that you can use to kind of sub in that third drink or how, however many drinks. That would be my number one recommendation uh, for folks to stay safe, especially uh, now that it's summertime. Um, staying hydrated um, and making sure you stay fed are the, 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 the number one recommendation I would give. And Williams says, if you plan to go out with friends, make sure you have each other's back. Just know your people that you're going out with, kind of know their limits. Um, so you can know when to recognize those signs and just approach them with the rideshare plan. Hey, how are you getting home? Hey, where's your keys? Let me hold on to, you know, your keys, your wallet for you. Um, let me schedule an Uber or a Lyft right now, you know, for an hour or 90 minutes. So we kind of have our, our time, countdown time already assigned, you know, for the time that it's we're ready to go home. For black wine drinkers, there's another key point to remember. According to a Harvard study, African-Americans are five times more likely to be pulled over by a police officer due to racial profiling. All an officer needs is one whiff of alcohol and one night of fun can quickly become a lifetime of regret. So another alternative to ride shares um, is to use our metro services and your public transportation services. Um, especially in Los Angeles, the metro uh, network has expanded, but definitely look towards your light rail, your bus systems, um, so you don't even have to worry about your keys or worry about how you're getting home. You can just get on the metro and you know use your public transportation services that are available as well. And now an update to a story we first brought you in May. That's when the creator of the proposed Lemert Park Wine Bar took the first step to open the business in the historic community. Kiana McGee was at it again, this time at the Juneteenth Street Festival in Lemert Park. Thousands of people attended the event and got a close-up look at the wine bar's setup. It's one more step towards turning a dream into reality. It's been a great day and it's been so nice talking to people about the business and people getting super excited about what's to come with Lamert Park Wine in this neighborhood. What's been the response to the Lamert Park Wine? What have people been saying? Oh, people are loving it. People are into it big time. Everyone is asking, what's the address? So I'm trying to get that together. So if you're an investor out there or a bank, come on, let's get this funding together so we can bring it to the neighborhood. All right, good luck there. And killer cold in Canada, British bubbles, and battling a bug. These are the top stories for this month's Wine in a Minute. A climate change disaster in British Columbia has devastated this year's production. Freeze events in December of 2022 have led to a 54% drop in grape production and more than $300 million in direct and indirect lost revenue. Great growers say much of the damage is irreparable. Meantime, in Great Britain, wine grape production has seen 74% growth in the last five years, according to the wine trade group Wine GB. The country went from producing 5 million bottles of wine in 2017 to 12 million bottles in 2022. Sparkling wine is the biggest seller, making up 68% of production. The U.S. Department of Agriculture just released a five-year plan to battle the dreaded spotted lanternfly, broader education campaigns, Better monitoring and increased spending on eradication methods make up the bulk of the plan. The invasive pest can destroy grape crops by eating through vines and promoting mold. And finally, we go to downtown Los Angeles, where one wine lover is at the start of living a lifelong dream. And she's loving it. 
Stephanie Watson has been fascinated with wine for as long as she can remember. Then in 2021, she applied for and received wine education scholarships from the nonprofit Roots Fund and from Wine Unified. Now she's pouring wine at high-end tastings and events. Stephanie, how cool is it pouring out here? Oh, this is, this is amazing. Uh, this is amazing champagne from the Jean Vassel Winery. Really, really good. Um, I've tasted a lot of other good wines over here. I'm having a blast. Watson was pouring at the Wine and Food Magazine LA tasting this time, which featured more than 100 wines. She says it's something she'd never be able to do without the scholarships. It is super important to me. I feel like it took me so long to get into the industry because I didn't really see a lot of me reflected in the industry. And now um, being a Roots Fund scholar, a Wine Unified scholar, I have my, the wine world has kind of been opened up to me. Stephanie Calderon knows all too well. She's a former scholarship winner and now mentors budding wine students like Watson for the Roots Fund. She says the best idea is to network, network, and network. For the new scholars, um, meet the other scholars, connect with folks. Um, that's how we, you know, expand our network. That's how we are able to get these opportunities. So take advantage of everything that comes your way, whether it's a pouring event, um, an enrichment trip, or a volunteer opportunity. As for Watson, the sky's the limit. From sommelier to winery owner, she says no dream is too big. What's the best part of it all? Tasting. <laughs> Tasting everything. Tasting everything, talking to everybody. I could honestly do this all day, every day. For more information on the scholarships, go to therootsfund.org and wineunify.org. And that's going to do it for this episode of winenewsnoir.com. Please be sure to visit our sponsors on the website. One more note here, winenewsnoir.com will be live in Atlanta later this month for the Hughes Society's Wine and Culture Fest. Our live reports will begin on July 28th and will air on our Instagram page. Be sure to tune in for those reports. Once again, thank you for watching and subscribing. I'm Jay Jackson. Cheers.